July 2nd, 2021, the first ever Fears to Fathom game came out. Fast forward to present day and there are four more games released and thousands upon thousands of people playing them. Those five games being Home Alone, Norwood Hitchhike, Carson House, Iron Bark Lookout, and the newest game, Woodbury Getaway. What better way to celebrate the new game than from ranking them worst to best? No tier list this time, we are going over each game individually explaining why they were placed where they were placed. So turn off the lights, hide under the covers, and let's get into this. Coming in fifth to start the list is episode two, Norwood Hitchhike. Now before we get into this, I just want to note two things. One, just because a game is ranked low doesn't mean that I think it's a bad game at all. I think every game in this series is absolutely amazing, just the ones in front of it are just better. And number two is that all of this is my personal opinion. You may think this last game is the best game, and that's fine because we all have our own opinions, but I just need y'all to know that this is my opinion and you have yours. Fears of Fathom Norwood Hitchhike follows 19-year-old named Holly Gardner who goes to a gaming convention and takes a long drive back home. Throughout her adventure, she gets warned about some scary sightings through a local gas station employee. After her car breaks down, she gets picked up by a man in a truck and dropped out of at a motel. There at that motel, an unknown man spies on her, sedates her, and eventually breaks into her room. Before he's able to do anything bad though, the manager of the motel comes and stops him. There's a lot of things to break down about this game. First off, a bunch of stuff that this game introduces. The next three games that followed Norwood Hitchhike all included some sort of driving, so that was a cool feature to see. The second one being hiding in a closet with a noise meter. Now in Fears to Fathom, there are noise meters where you go and hide from the enemy, and if you get too loud, they will immediately immediately kill you. Now, I did like this game a lot. I played the first one, and it was so hype for the second one. Some things I didn't like or didn't understand was, one, I didn't think the game was as scary and suspenseful as the other ones. And the second one being what the gas station attendant warns about, a girl in a white or blue gown standing on the side of the road. I didn't really understand that because we only see him once, and we don't see him again throughout the whole game. Like, obviously, these are based off of true stories, and you can't manipulate them, but it just didn't make sense. The game was also very long, which was fine. It just had a lot of stuff that I just don't think needed to be added. Overall, I think this was a very, very solid game with just a few flaws that if you just tweaked it up a little bit, it could be a standalone game. But without further ado, that was number five. Let's move on to number four. Number four on this list is the first game of the series, Fierce of Fathom Home Alone. Now in this game, you play as Miles, a 14-year-old boy who is left alone by his parents and has a pretty standard Home Alone night. He eats some food, does some homework, he goes to sleep. Pretty normal, right? Well, in the middle of the night, he gets a knock at the door and a text from his mom exclaiming that there is someone at the house trying to break in. They eventually do get in, get into his parents' bedroom, and he has to hide and wait for the cops to get there. Now, this game is very simple, having the lowest playtime out of the entire Fears to Fathom series. And I did very much enjoy this game, and it actually did scare me. It was very basic, and I wish there was more, but for what it was, it was pretty good. I like the lasagna scene. The guy in the bedroom was actually scary. The part where you see him run up the stairs but can't see him after that was crazy. And the text messages from mom exclaiming that there was someone at the house was absolutely wild. Oh, and you also can't forget chugging a water bottle. This is honestly a pretty solid standalone game, which I wish just had more. That was number four. Let's move on to number three. Number three on this list into the third rim edition of the series is Fierce of Fathom Carson House. Now in this game, you play as Noah Baker, an 18-year-old boy who gets asked to house sit for a family friend. Throughout the game, you do some normal stuff, from house sitting duties, grocery shopping, even fix the guy's computer. But then it takes a dark twist. A crazy ex of the house owner shows up and tries to kill him. She starts messing with the power, texting Noah, and eventually gets in the house. But thankfully, Noah was able to hide and escape, and she was arrested. Now, there is a lot to take away from this game. One, the playtime is super, super long. Number two, we actually get to ride a bike instead of a car in this, which was super great. And the grocery store scene where you get to pick and choose, talk to your friends, was actually really cool as well. And when I tell you how scary this game was, oh my goodness, it was terrifying. The computer stuff, in my opinion, wasn't really needed, but, you know, it was there. 
But considering that, you also got to see some cameras, which was really fun. It was really scary and added to the overall horror experience. Plus, there was a dog. Overall, a very solid horror game, super scary, and only minor flaws. That was number three. Let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two on this list is Fierce to Fathom Iron Bark Lookout. In this game, you play as Jack Nelson. He's a 24-year-old fire lookout who gets transferred to a new station. You go to a diner, eat some food, and then arrive at your camp. Throughout the game, you're always doing these fire lookout tasks. At one point, you get a distress call and have to hike into the woods and go check it out, only to find out that the camper who called out was missing. In the middle of the night one night, someone shows up at your door. Once you hide and you go out and look, you see a satanic a crazy looking thing sitting on your porch. After this, you continue to do your normal duties till one faithful night where you walk out onto your terrace, you look through your binoculars, and you see a colt roasting someone alive. After you take a picture and they see you, they come running. You have to hide and then run back to your RV to get away from them. There's a lot to unpack with this game. First off, I'm just going to talk about the few negative parts that I didn't like. The amount of logging, going back and forth, just the fire duty which were needed for sure, but there was just so, so, so much of them. I just think that's something that just took away from the horror element. It just felt kind of grindy, but at the end of the day, you know, we had to do it for the plot. But let's talk about the positives. First off, at the diner, it was super fun to, you know, be able to pick out a meal, talk to all the NPCs, and just have a good time there. The jump scares in this were very good, and the cult was just so scary, and the way that you encounter them with the flash of the flashlight out on your terrace is just crazy. There was even a game within the game that you got to play. Like, that was awesome. You even got to make more food, which was even cooler. I, I guess I'm just a big back. The scene with the hiker and going missing and calling out was just absolutely terrifying and I loved every second of it. And you could even throw gasoline all over your house, which was just wild. Whenever this game came out, it was so hyped and it was definitely worth a hype. I absolutely loved it. And there's just one game that beats it. That was number two. Let's move on to number one. Coming in at number one, the absolute best Fierce to Fathom game, Fierce to Fathom Woodbury Getaway. In this game, you play as a 23-year-old named Sydney Harper, a regular everyday office worker who goes on a weekend getaway with her two friends, Mike and Nora. And, and just to put some emphasis on this, guys, before I get back to, you know, the narrating of the story, Mike in this game is the most intolerable, cringe, disgusting ugh, guy I've ever met. After driving to the spot with some awkward conversation and nearly hitting a deer, you arrive. It's a nice little home, but then you discover the owner is in the house. Kind of weird, right? After he leaves, you unpack your groceries and then you go do something that we've never seen in a game. You do some fishing. You catch a couple carp, cook some dinner, watch a show, and you play a game. Once this is done, you decide to let out your inner childhood and play hide and seek around the house, only to discover that the owner was back. This time, the confrontation meeting up was far more aggressive and definitely sent chills down your spines. After this, she tries to get some sleep before Mike comes in talking some crazy stuff, and then you get a text from Nora saying she's broke down somewhere. Guys? Mike leaves, and then it all falls apart. Now, one thing to know previously in the story you went to a pizza shop a hiker asked to come join you on your adventure and you say no and then for some reason that hiker shows up at your house asking to be let inside you say no text the owner to come back and he does when standing around you get a text from the actual owner saying that's not him the guy in the house gets alerted tries to stop you but you run away hide run away hide and eventually mike and nora show up to save the day i recently played this game there's gonna be a link to that video Video in the description. Oh my goodness, what a good game. The aspect of Mike being a cringe guy is just so well portrayed. You are meant to not like Mike, and it works. Fishing, super cool. You get to play either Jenga or a Ouija board. The hide and seek was pretty cool, and the jump scares from both the janitor and the fake owner were just so jaw dropping. They got me every single time. 
Plus in this game, there was queso and tons of other creators, which was awesome. There was a cat in the attic. And the fact that that guy was not the owner getting that text was the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping thing I think I've ever read. While this game did take a long time to come out, it honestly was the best game out of the Fears to Fathom series. So, so good. Really, the only thing I'd complain about is the TV show that you watch whenever you eat. It seemed pretty lame. And the misdirection whenever he goes and tries to lock the door and trap you inside. It doesn't give you a clear place to go, which took me a few tries to get into. So everybody, that was ranking every single Fears to Fathom game in the series. Five being Norwood Hitchhike, four being Home Alone, three being Carson House, two being Iron Bark Lookout, and the number one best Fears to Fathom game being Woodbury Getaway. Now, I just want to say every single game in this series is absolutely amazing, and I look forward to the ones in the future. And as well, this is all my personal rankings. Feel free to tell me all your rankings down in the comments. And to rail the owner, you did such a good job. Keep up the great work, man. Just uh, chef's kiss. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to join the J team. This is your leader, JT, signing off saying I love you all dearly, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.